the nightly business report. Good evening. Tonight, the finance ministry says Sri Lanka's state revenue from income taxes increased by 16.3% to 624.7 billion rupees in the first eight months of this year. Sri Lanka Tourism prepares for the upcoming World Travel Market 2024 in London, poised for promising growth and development. The first trading day of the week saw a mixed trend at the Colombo Stock Exchange, as the All Share Price Index records a downturn, while the S&P SL20 Index maintains its positivity. And US regulators open an investigation into 2.4 million Tesla vehicles with the automaker's full self-driving software after four reported collisions, including a fatal crash. From Studio 24, here's Anuradhi Vikramasinghe. A very good evening and thank you for joining us. The Finance Ministry said that Sri Lanka's state revenue from income taxes increased by 16.3% to 624.7 billion rupees in the first eight months of this year. This is according to the pre-election budgetary position report by the Treasury. The report said that this is mainly due to the impact of implemented tax policy changes on personal and corporate income tax, advanced personal income tax and withholding tax during recent years, as well as the impact of improved tax administration measures. The Treasury said that it mandated financial institutions to submit details of individual taxpayers' transactions to the Indian Revenue Department, making electronic tax filing mandatory for individual income taxpayers. It also stated that individuals, including government agencies, will be required to regularly exchange information with the Commissioner-General of the Indian Revenue and that deductions for expenses will be allowed for tax purposes. Revenue from personal and corporate income tax also increased by 16.3% in the first eight months of this year compared to the same period last year. Meanwhile, revenue collection from APIT increased substantially by 32.6% to 31.7 billion rupees during the first eight months of 2024, which is this year, compared to 23.9 billion rupees in the same period last year. Further revenue from WHT on interest also recorded an increase of 16% to 113.4 billion rupees from 97.8 billion rupees. <laughs> Sri Lanka's cabinet has approved a plan by the Minister of Health to buy medical supplies from local companies for one year. The cabinet had approved entering into agreements with identified companies for this initiative. The Medical Supplies Division of the Minister of Health has found that 49 local companies could supply 454 types of medical supplies, including medicines. The cabinet had approved entering into agreements with identified companies for one year for medical supplies and medicines. Sri Lanka's government in 2013 had decided to purchase medicines from local companies without tender under so-called buyback agreements for 15 years through the State Pharmaceuticals Corporation. Prices were to be decided by a committee. In 2018, the decision was made to have buyback agreements without competitive tenders for 10 years. Originally, the privilege was to be given for only 5 years under a so-called infant industry argument. <laughs> The Board of Investment of Sri Lanka has officially appointed Arjuna Herat as its new chairman. Herat succeeds Dinesh Virakodi, who held the position for two years. With an extensive career as a senior chartered accountant, he brings decades of expertise in finance, consulting and leadership to his new role as the BOI chairman. He previously served as a senior partner and head of consulting at Ernst & Young in Sri Lanka and the Maldives. Currently, he serves as a board member at the Colombo Stock Exchange and has held positions as the commissioner of the Securities and Exchange Commission of Sri Lanka and a board member of the Sri Lanka Accounting and Auditing Standards Monitoring Board. Herod is also a past president of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Sri Lanka and a former chairman of the Sri Lanka Personal Data Protection Authority. <laughs> Sri Lanka Tourism is all set to make a grand entry at the upcoming World Travel Market 2024 in London as the country's tourism industry is poised for promising growth and development. The largest ever trade delegation will represent Sri Lanka at this year's show. The participation underscores the country's commitment to positioning itself as a premier travel destination for the United Kingdom travellers amidst the renewed tourism strategy and new way forward. At W2M 2024, Sri Lanka will highlight its strategic roadmap for revitalising tourism, building on a remarkable 50% year-on-year growth rate experiencing so far from the UK, the second largest source market for Sri Lanka. This rival growth, which significantly surpasses the previous year's performance, signals a very positive future for the country's travel sector. Sri Lanka's participation in WTM is 
especially significant this year as it comes at a time of immense transformation for the country. The new government's vision for tourism emphasizes sustainable development, cultural enrichment and ecotourism with a focus on harnessing the country's diverse tourism assets and offerings. The government has spent only 53% of the welfare budget allocated for the year within the first eight months up to August. A latest report from the Finance Ministry indicates that the welfare budget has primarily been used to fund the Aswasuma welfare program. The report also states that Sri Lanka is expected to receive $1.69 billion in loans from multilateral agencies within the next three to five years. In the pre-election budgetary report by the Finance Ministry, it is reported that as the end of August this year, foreign development partners and lending agencies have entered into 10 agreements with the government for foreign financing, totaling $398.7 million. Of this amount, $350 million has been secured in the form of loans. Another $48.7 million has been obtained through seven grant agreements with the governments of Japan and Australia under official development assistance. Meanwhile, total foreign financing disbursements up to August this year amounted to $1.01 billion, of which $994 million has been disbursed as loans, while $11.3 million has been provided as grants. The Asian Development Bank has disbursed $358.3 million in Sri Lanka up to August this year, slightly surpassing the IMF which has provided $334 million in budget support loans. The World Bank has contributed $239.8 million. The newly appointed chairman of the Sri Lanka Tea Board has forecast tea production in 2024 to improve to 265 to 270 million kilograms on the back of improved production over the coming months, claiming that improving production will be one of the top priorities during his tenure. The Sri Lankan Tea Board Chairman Rajpal Obisekara has emphasized that improving tea production will be a top priority during his tenure as declining production numbers have significantly impacted the industry in recent years. He noted that production is in the doldrums with figures around 250 to 260 million kilograms annually, down from 320 to 330 million kilograms over the past 7 to 8 years. Obisekara attributed the slowdown primarily Obisekara attributed the slowdown primarily to aging tea bushes and announced that the SLTB has initiated several replanting programs. Addition he pointed out that recent fertilizer crisis has further worsened the situation. However, he expressed optimism that the newly granted fertilizer subsidies would help address these challenges with positive results expected within the next 12 to 18 months. Let's take a short break now. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. The first trading day of the week saw a mixed trend at the Colombo Stock Exchange. The All Share Price Index recorded a downturn while the S&P SL20 Index maintained its positivity. To get a summary on today's trading, we connect with Zaima Jihan from First Capital Holdings. The Colombo Stock Exchange experienced a volatile trading day today uh, with mixed investor sentiment leading to a relatively flat close. Uh, so with this, the All Share Price Index dropped marginally by 4 points uh, to settle at 12,309, while the S&P SL20 Index inched up uh, 2 points, also closing flat. Uh, investor interest was seen mainly in banking and insurance sectors, uh, with some part banks standing out as a key positive contributor to the ASPI. Uh, Construction-related stocks also saw some buying activity, while plantation sector counters attracted uh, notable attention during the day. Uh, despite the market activity, turnover dipped to 1.5 billion rupees, marking a 31% decline compared to the monthly average of uh, 2.2 billion rupees. Uh, so the capital goods sector led the way in terms of turnover, contributing 23% of the total, uh, followed by the food, beverage and tobacco sector with an 18% share. Uh, so, again on the foreign front, investors remained net sellers for the third straight day with an outflow of uh, 109.4 million rupees. Uh, Dala Gasiata, Hatton Plantations and Lanka Milk Foods were among the top stocks uh, leading the foreign exits. On the other hand, uh, John Keyes Holdings, Sampath Bank and Chevron Lubricants were the top three counters recording the largest foreign inflow. 
the week initiated on a mixed sentiment and how exactly will it behave for the rest of the coming week? Well, we have Dimantha Matthew standing by to give us the forecast. Thank you. So last week uh, we saw the market uh, having a bit of uh, volatility in line with our expectations. Uh, however, this week uh, we think uh, there could be a bit more uh, buying interest uh, coming in uh, with earnings seasons being uh, around the corner. So we are expecting earnings to be uh, quite good with the recovery in the economy and that is likely to translate uh, to better returns in the stock market as well. So with that uh, we feel that uh, uh, bargain hunters are likely to come in uh, to the market and uh, buying interest is likely to follow. We think there will be a, a bit more retail interest also coming into the market as uh, with the lower interest rate uh, environment there is likely to be a, a flow of funds, funds into the equity market as well. So uh, with that overall we think uh, gradually there could be a rise in turnover levels and overall uh, improvement uh, in the market. However, be mindful that uh, we are going into the month end and there could be some uh, month end uh, selling pressure that is uh, also likely to be there. However, uh, overall we think there could be a positive momentum uh, gradually building up uh, over the week. Gold soared to an impressive record high today, continuing its remarkable rally driven by a confluence of global uncertainties. Factors such as the upcoming U.S. election, escalating tensions in the Middle East and anticipated interest rate cuts by major central banks have all contributed to this surge in demand for safe haven assets. Spot gold climbed 0.3%, reaching $2,729.40 per ounce after briefly touching an all-time peak of $2,732.73 earlier in the day. The significant increase reflects investor sentiment that favors gold amid fluctuating market conditions. Concurrently, U.S. gold futures rose by 0.6%, trading at $2,744.80, indicating strong momentum in the gold market. The rising prices of both gold and silver highlight a growing concern among investors regarding economic stability and geopolitical tensions, prompting a shift towards safer investment options. Oil prices were broadly steady today following a more than 7% drop last week on worries about demand in China, the world's top oil importer, and an easing of concerns about potential supply disruptions in the Middle East. Brent crude futures were up 0.5% to $73.44 a barrel. U.S. West Texas Intermediate crude futures were up 0.6% to $69.66 a barrel. Brent had settled down more than 7% last week, while WTI lost around 8%. That marked the contract's biggest weekly decline since the 2nd of September on slowing economic growth in China and falling risk premiums in the Middle East. Data on Friday showed that China's economy grew at the slowest pace since early 2020. In the third quarter, fueling growing concerns about oil demand. The Sri Lankan rupee has experienced a slight depreciation against the US dollar today, as reported by the Central Bank of Sri Lanka. This change reflects an increase in both the buying and selling rates of the dollar compared to last Friday. Now, let's take a look at how the Sri Lankan rupee is faring against other global currencies. break now this is the nightly business report welcome back to the nightly business report 
The Institute of Chartered Accountants of Sri Lanka presented awards to three distinguished chartered accountants for their remarkable contributions to the world of business locally and globally. On the 15th of October this year, the first day of technical sessions at the 45th National Conference of Chartered Accountants was held at the Monarch Imperial recognizing outstanding achievements in the field. Three exceptional members were honored with prestigious awards. The awards were CA Best Entrepreneur of the Year, Best Rising CFO, and CA Business Leader of the Year, celebrating their remarkable ability to elevate the businesses into new heights. Olujai Surya received the CA Best Entrepreneur Award for this year. With extensive experience in financial and management accounting, fund management, budgeting, forecasting, internal auditing, financial reporting, business planning, and process restructuring, Olu has made a significant contribution to the industry. Prior to co-founding BRISCA, she served as a CFO and group CFO for several reputable companies. Pramita Ranshika was recognized as the best rising CFO for this year. As director of group finance for Team Global Express, one of the largest transportation and logistics group in Australia and New Zealand, Pramita brings over 20 years of experience, having worked across five countries and three continents. Her leadership and expertise continue to drive in a dynamic sector. These awards highlight the exceptional talent and dedication within the chartered accountants community, inspiring future leaders in the industry. Sri Lanka's luxury lifestyle brand Spa Salon has won three titles at the 2024 World Luxury Awards, putting the country under the fresh spotlight. The recognition comes from the votes of over 300,000 international travellers and industry professionals. The brand emerged as the winner in the category's Global Beauty Product, Global Luxury Ayurveda Spa and Regional Spa Group at the awards ceremony held in the United Kingdom over the weekend. The recognition comes from the votes of over 300,000 international travellers and industry professionals who contribute each year to celebrate the best luxury brands in the world. Spa Ceylon, a Sri Lankan company founded in 2009, is popular for its services that blend traditional Ayurvedic practices with modern beauty and wellness techniques. The company's range of servicing offerings include skin care, body care, hair care, home fragrances and wellness teas. The brand is a well-known name in the global wellness industry with over 100 retail outlets worldwide including in major cities across Asia, Europe and the Middle East. Martin Bauer Haley's Limited has enhanced its energy independence by collaborating with Haley Solar to install a 1,273 kilowatt peak grid tied solar photovoltaic system at its tea extract facilities in Hatton, Norelia. This landmark installation is now the largest solar power project in Norelia district expected to generate an impressive 1,486 megawatts of electricity annually while offsetting over 1 million kilograms of carbon dioxide emissions. Equipped with high-level voltage metering system, it showcases advanced technology for sustainable energy production. Located at the Blink Bonnie and Inger states, the solar panels benefit from cooler temperatures which enhance their efficiency by facilitating the movement of electrons in a photovoltaic cells. This project has been optimized through careful design and features to separate transformers ensuring that each section of the solar array operates a peak performance and maximizes sunlight usage. Haley Solar's proven expertise in delivering turnkey solar solution positions the company as a lead in Sri Lanka's renewable energy landscape, contributing significantly to the country's sustainability goals. Sri Lanka Telecom PLC has announced the resignation of its chairperson, AKDD Arandara. According to reports, Arandara submitted his resignation letter to the board of directors on the 18th of October. His departure marks a notable change in the company's leadership as he officially vacated his position effective October 16th. Arandara has been an influential figure within the organization, also serving as a non-executive director during his tenure. As the company's transitions to new leadership, stakeholders will be keenly observing how this change may influence Sri Lanka Telecom's strategic direction and operational initiatives. The board of directors will now be tasked with identifying a successor who can continue to drive the company's growth and innovation in an increasingly competitive environment. The latest Singhagiri Plaza flagship showroom featuring cutting-edge technology and home appliances recently opened on R.A. Demel Mavatha. The event celebrated the enduring 40-year partnership between Samsung and Singhagiri, highlighting the company's 52-year legacy. The Singhagiri Plaza showroom proudly features a range of world-leading brands including Hisense, Candy, HP, 
Lenovo, Realme and Oppo showcasing the latest innovations in the consumer electronics market. The recent opening event was attended by esteemed dignitaries including Singagiri Private Limited Director Anusha Marasingha and Samsung Sri Lanka Managing Director Sangwa Song, highlighting the significance of this occasion. Founded in 1972 by Sugata Dasa Marasingha, Singagiri has established itself as a trusted name in Sri Lanka's consumer electronics market. Over the years, the company has navigated challenging market conditions while consistently elevating the Samsung brand since its inception in 1983. This partnership has solidified Samsung's reputation as one of the most sought-after brands among consumers across the nation. Samsung's innovative and sophisticated products have not only contributed to the country's technological advancement, but have also played a significant role in enhancing personal development for many individuals. The showroom's opening marks a milestone in Singagiri's commitment to delivering a quality and innovation to its customers, further strengthening the bond between these two respected entities. <laughs> Let's take a short commercial break. Global business updates coming on the other side. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. Most Asian stocks kept to a tight range today as focus remained on the upcoming earnings season, while Chinese markets rose in choppy trade after the People's Bank cut rates slightly more than expected. Regional markets took some positive cues from Wall Street as U.S. stock indexes closed near record highs on Friday, and Wall Street futures were mildly positive in Asian trade. A slew of major U.S. and Asian earnings are due in the coming weeks, offering up more cues on corporate profits amid high global interest rates and softer economic conditions. The LPR cut comes amid a flurry of stimulus measures from Beijing and was largely expected by the markets. U.S. regulators are opening an investigation into 2.4 million Tesla vehicles with the automaker's full self-driving software after four reported collisions, including a fatal crash. U.S. regulators are opening an investigation into Tesla over its full self-driving software. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration said Friday it would research 2.4 million vehicles fitted with the technology. It comes after four reports of crashes where full self-driving, or FSD, was engaged during reduced roadway visibility. Those conditions include sun glare, fog or airborne dust. The regulator said in one crash the Tesla vehicle fatally struck a pedestrian. Tesla says on its website its FSD software in on-road vehicles requires active driver supervision. It further said it doesn't make vehicles autonomous. The probe covers a number of models including 2023-24 Cybertruck vehicles. The preliminary evaluation is the first step before the agency could seek to demand a recall of the vehicles. It would take such a step if it believes they pose an unreasonable risk to safety. Tesla CEO Elon Musk aims to shift Tesla's focus to self-driving technology and robo-taxis. The company did not immediately respond to requests for comment. The Taipei-listed shares of TSMC hit a record high on Friday, but rival Samsung has postponed taking deliveries of chip-making equipment for its upcoming factory in Texas, hinting at a widening gap between the two giant chipmakers. Two Asian chipmaking giants had a Friday to remember, but for different reasons. Taiwan's TSMC saw shares rocket to record levels, but Samsung had a disappointing day. Investors were excited after TSMC posted forecast-beating earnings for the third quarter the day before. It reported a 54% jump in quarterly profit beyond analyst projections. The world's largest chipmaker for other companies also gave a strong outlook for artificial intelligence demand. Its shares closed up almost 5% Friday, beating a record set earlier this year. TSMC counts Apple and Nvidia among its customers and has benefited from a surge in AI's popularity. It's now Asia's most valuable company, worth around $874 billion. Rival Samsung had a very different feel on Friday. Sources said the South Korean giant postponed taking deliveries of chip-making equipment from Dutch firm ASML. The sources added the machines were supposed to be delivered to Samsung's upcoming factory in Texas. But they said the firm has yet to win any major customers for the project. 
The delay is a blow to the ambitions of Chairman Jay Wiley to expand beyond memory chips into contract chip manufacturing. TSMC dominates the market and the gulf with Samsung could be widening as the Taiwanese firm ramps up production. And that's all from us here at the Nightly Business Report for today. We'll see you again tomorrow with the latest updates in the business globe. Until then, I'm Anuradhi Vikramasinghe. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good night.